Hello, everyone. I am Rick from the Tax Dome team, and I would like to thank you all for joining me today for the first session in our series of setup webinars. Today, I will be walking you through your first steps. Now, we also have a team who will keep an eye on the chat and the Q&A, so please feel free to get your questions in there, and our team will get them answered for you. In our webinars, we will be focusing on various aspects and functions of TaxDome. However, in this particular webinar, we will help you understand the basics of TaxDome and we'll also give you a game plan you'll be able to follow in order to get your firm set up as quickly as possible. So let us take a look at our agenda for today. The first thing that we will cover is what TaxDome actually is all about. We'll then outline the setup steps you'll be focusing on in the coming days. Next, we will go into the portal and go over the basics of navigating through TaxDome. After that, we will take a moment to talk about how our CRM works. We will then switch our focus to the client import, meaning everything from the preparation to the actual import steps. And last, we will go over how you can interact with your imported clients and then we will wrap everything up. We'll also have a couple of small breaks today, so you'll all have a chance to catch your breath, ask some questions, take some good notes. So with that, let us start by briefly talking about what TaxDome is in case you're completely new to it. And for those of you on the call here today who are already attended our live demo or learned a little bit about TaxDome on your own, no worries, we will keep the introductions short. TaxDome is an all-in-one practice management platform designed for CPAs, EAs, bookkeepers, and accounting professionals to make managing your firm, clients, and work as easy as possible. We achieve this by providing you with a platform where you'll take care of everything in one place and also utilize tons of tools within TaxDome to help you with all of your actual day-to-day -day work. Now, let me be a little bit more specific there so you know exactly what we can help you with. You can already see some of our features here on the slide, but let's use a couple of common examples. As part of TaxDome, you'll be able to interact and communicate with your clients easily and securely through your own portal. You have unlimited document storage and tools to manage those same documents in many different ways. You will be sending out proposals, invoices, organizers, and much more. And on top of all of that, you will use our workflow functions to automate and streamline your processes to a degree which will make you wonder how you ever got along with TaxDome before today. Now, there are, of course, many more tools and functions that I haven't mentioned, but that's okay because our primary focus for today is to get everything set up and started. Because TaxDome has so much to offer, we have tons of resources available like our help center, video tutorials, webinars, and full academy courses. But in addition to all of that, we also have a support team which has successfully guided thousands of users through their setup. Now let's take a moment to kind of break down the process for setting up your firm in TaxDome. This will apply to you regardless of whether you're just starting to digitize your practice or if you're switching from some other software that you've been using for some time. Here we listed the key parts of your setup process. And as you can see, it's not very intimidating this way when we break it down into the core steps. Today, we will focus on the first step, but let's quickly go over all of them so you can get an idea of what these steps will really entail. The client import is exactly what it sounds like. You will prepare a list of your existing clients and you'll want to get them into TaxDome. As part of this, you'll also do some simple preparation to make sure they're all organized properly, since the stronger you build your foundation, the better the rest of the setup will go. Now, I would recommend opening your spreadsheet program since I'll want you to follow along as I show you this import process. If you have two screens, well, it's gonna be really easy to follow, but we'll take it slow once we get to that point. So even if you're just using one screen, you should be able to get the gist of it. 
Now, after importing your clients into TaxDome, the next step to take care of will be the workflow setup. Now, we will talk more about this and the other points here in detail in other webinars, but you will need to break down your processes for all the services you provide into steps, and then you'll build optimized and automated versions of those processes inside of TaxDome. Enabling payment processing will really be a simple step to make sure that you can send out invoices and also receive payments through TaxDome. Adding your team to the portal will, of course, be very important since you will all be cooperating on tasks or jobs and having them in TaxDome will let you assign team members to clients, tasks, or jobs. And finally, once everything is ready, you will invite your clients to the portal in order for them to actually use it and interact with you through their portals. This is generally the last step of your setup, but since it's so easy to do, I will show you near the end of today's webinar how you would take care of this. Now, there are still other things besides the ones that I just talked about that you can do before you invite your clients. You can see some of them here on this slide. So if your main goal is just to get to work right away, then the core steps that I listed earlier are what you need to focus on. Most other things can be done at later points without any negative impact. To briefly go back to those previous points, the main reasons you should focus on them are to be able to interact with your clients, to be able to get work done for them efficiently, and of course, to get paid for the work that you've done. Now, this won't come as a surprise, but these steps will require you to put in some work to get them done. But you can get your firm up and running in no time if you follow our instructions and either go through the academy courses or all of the webinars that we have available. Now today, you'll already see how to handle one of those steps. As I mentioned in our agenda, the next thing we'll do is a quick run through of the firm portal. But before we switch screens, I want to reiterate for those of you who might have joined us a little bit late, our team is currently answering questions in the chat and Q&A section. So if you do have some questions, feel free to ask us anything that you want to know more about and we will get you an answer here. Okay, I'll just switch from showing you these slides here to a screen share and then we can get some work done. So let's dive in. Let's get started. The first thing that you will see when you log in is our insights page. It shows you everything you might want to pay attention to, like your pending work, which in TaxDome we call jobs, and all the things on your to-do list, which we call tasks. This page also shows you all items your clients haven't completed yet, like organizers, proposals, pending signatures, and more. So in a way, this is your central hub where you'll get a quick overview of the most important things. But if you wanna go elsewhere or see a more detailed view of some page, you will use this menu here on the left. There, you'll have these tabs where you can expand and then open any of these pages inside of them. Now we will go through them in a top to bottom order, starting with the Inbox Plus. When it comes to how you'll know when clients reach out to you or complete something for you that you've been waiting for them to do, your Inbox Plus will be your best friend. Imagine a customizable notification center where you get notified about everything that is important for you. And you will have thought of the Inbox Plus page right here. Now, if someone were to sign a proposal that you sent out or upload some new documents, message you, or they do anything else that you should know of, you will always know about it right away and you can then archive the notification once you don't need to see it anymore. On top of this, you can also receive the same notifications by email. Now, if you notice, if I click my accounts settings, there's a whole section in here where you can adjust which notifications you'll receive and also where you'll receive them. You just tick or untick these little boxes here to make those adjustments. Now, let me take a step back here to the Inbox Plus for a moment to show you something else that is really neat, and we'll do this really quickly here. We made sure to add a filter button 
to many of our pages since we know how much something like that can help you cut down on the time you spend looking for things. So if you need to find specific notifications, either for certain accounts or you're just looking for a specific type of notification, like for example, only emails, well, then you can filter this list. Let's go to the clients page now, or more specifically, the accounts page. There's also a contacts page, but we are going to clarify the difference in a couple of minutes once we start talking about the CRM portion of it. But here, you'll be able to see all your clients once you create their accounts or import them. Now, in my case, I already have some clients imported, but I will explain to you in a little bit what the best practices for bringing your clients into TaxDome are. We will come back to this page after we finish our run through of the remaining pages here. Let's go ahead and move on to the workflow tab here. The pages in here are all there to help you manage your work, meaning everything ranging from your full processes as pipelines to the individual client jobs, and then the tasks you and your team are working on. There's even a calendar view to help you see all your jobs and tasks in a different view. Either way, it will help you keep everything organized, and that's the whole point here. In your case, most of these pages are likely empty since you're just getting started and starting to put information in here. But once you start seeing things popping up in there, you will see the benefits instantly. Next up, we've got the documents page. This is where you can view both the recently uploaded documents and all your clients' folders if you switch to that tab. This way, you don't have to open each account separately. So it's a great way to view files if you need to switch between clients a lot during your day. In contrast to this client docs page where you see all of your clients' files, the wiki page is where you can find all internal documents that you and your team have created. Their basic purpose is to have a place for team resources like standard operating procedures and even some guides, but you can use them for anything that you really want to use them for. These will be accessible to your team and can also be shared with clients if necessary. Now, for the time being here, we don't need to focus on these too much either. So let's just go right into the billings tab. Just like it was the case for the workflows tab and it's showing you everything work related, the Billings tab shows you all the information you need to keep up with invoices, payments, and much more. So if you need to check the statuses of some of your invoices, this is going to be the place to visit. There is also a Proposals and Engagement Letters page right here. We know you will be sending out a lot of these in the future, so we created a page where you can see all of them in one place while waiting for your clients to get around to signing them. Now the next tab is the templates tab. I mentioned TaxDome will help you automate and speed up your work significantly. And to do that, you will rely on many templates, which you either create yourself, copy from our library, or even get from the marketplace that we have here. This same marketplace will also keep expanding as time goes on. So there will be more and more templates to choose from in the future. Now, besides your templates, you'll also handle other things like your services, tags, and more. But because they fill a similar purpose to templates, we group them all together here under the templates tab. The last tab in this menu is the settings tab, which is where you will control and manage all your firm's details, subscriptions, integrations, and even the website. You'll be visiting all these pages throughout your setup, but we don't need to dedicate more time to them right at this moment. Okay, so that wraps up our quick overview, and I'm sure it already gave you some insights into some of the tools TaxDome leaves at your disposal. Now, we are going to start talking about the CRM in a moment and things that you should do before you import your client information, but let us take our first break right now. I'm going to leave this slide up with a small recap of the overview, and I will give you all a chance to write down any notes, send us any questions in the Q&A that you might have. So let's sit tight here. I'll give you a few seconds, and we'll be back in a moment.
All right, everybody, that's a short little break for everyone. Again, continue to get your questions in if you have them. Continue to take your notes, and we are going to move forward here and jump right into our CRM basics. So let's go through all of that part of our program here. Now, you're likely starting to get an idea of how we organize everything inside of TaxDome. We make sure there's a specific place for everything. And that way you don't need to look at stuff you don't care about at that particular moment or struggle with checking a bunch of places just to get the things that you're looking for. Now let's get back again to the clients page and we will talk more about the CRM. This will all be important to understand since you want to import everything and have that go smoothly. So first, Let's take a moment to clear up the very first question you might have when you start adding clients into TaxDome. What are accounts and what are contacts? Great question. I will just pull up a slide here. We're going to clear all of that up. Okay, accounts can be either a business or an individual. So regardless, whether it's an account for a single person or a group of people, it will always be one account. That account will be the entity you work for and that you bill. Contacts, on the other hand, are the individual people who will be linked to these accounts. Or in other words, a contact is always a single person which you link to accounts to give them access to that particular account. As an example, you can have one account for an entire family like let's say the Simpson family account, okay? But then you will have individual contacts for each of the family members who will then be linked to that single Simpsons family account. So think of it this way. The Simpson family account is your main point of interaction, meaning where you'll upload documents, send messages, invoices, and everything else. Then Homer and Marge have separate contacts, which you will be able to access that shared family account and all the information you sent to it. Another example would be an account for a firm you're working for. You need an account for the firm, but then you'll link all the contacts which need access. Those can be the owner and if necessary, even employees within the company. Now, the easiest way to grasp this is by creating a test account and contact with a personal email address you have access to. This also helps with understanding the portal better since you get to see how things work from both firm and client perspectives. So I strongly recommend creating a test client. You can do that from any page in your portal by using this new button right up here. You just select the account option in the menu that appears and you'll get to make the test client. You can try creating one even during our next break if you want. We'll give you enough time to play around with that. So now that we have cleared this up, we can start focusing on the import preparation and then we will come back to talk more about the accounts once we actually get them in there. However, if you are not sure, if you understand something right, again, everybody, just let us know in the Q&A section. Our team is here to help you out and answer your questions. Okay, so our goal is to help you learn how you will import your clients into the portal. But before we go over the important steps, let's take a second to talk about two features you should know about, folder templates and tags. While both of these steps can be taken care of at a later point, it is best to go over them now and avoid having to do any extra work later on. By now, you most likely have some way you store all of your client's files. It might be somewhere on a cloud or you might be keeping everything stored locally on your computers. In either case, you have some folder structure that you are likely used to using by now. Well, in TaxDome, you will be able to set up folder templates for various folder structures, and then you can apply those to your clients either during the import or at a later time. So this means you can have different sets of folders for different client groups, depending on which services you are performing for them. So now you'll want to think about whether or not you want to recreate your old structure and continue using that in TaxDome, or if you want to maybe try something new, now might be a good time. 
Either way, let me show you what this looks like. To make them, you would need to go into your templates tab and then the folders sub tab. We have a default one that is available as soon as you start using TaxDome, but we always recommend editing it to make it suit your needs or making new ones that you'll use instead. The process is pretty simple, and we also have resources on how to create folder templates, which go into it in more detail. So again, we're not gonna spend too much time on that today. The important things to know about them are you can make as many folders and subfolders as you want, you can set every top level folder to one of three privacy settings where the client can view and edit, which means the client can access all the contents within the folder and also edit those contents. Client can view, which only allows the client to view and download the files and folders and private, which as the name would imply is not visible to the client whatsoever, but instead it's just for you and your team so you can keep everything in one place. So when you set up the folder templates, pay attention to the types of folders you create. Now I think somebody from our team sent a link to our help article about the folder templates a moment ago. So take a look at it if you'd like to learn more about that. Okay, the other important feature that I mentioned earlier are tags. You can make those in the tags page in your templates tab. They're basically labels that you can attach to your clients to categorize them so you can search for them easier later. You can then always filter by that tag to find all the clients with a specific tag and you can interact with those in bulk. You can create as many as you want for all the different types and groups of clients that you will be importing. These tags can also help you automate things more efficiently, but we will talk more about automation in our workflow webinar. Similar to folder templates, you can either apply these as you are importing your client's list or at any later point, but it is definitely significantly faster if you handle it during the import process so you don't have to go back and rework things. That's also what we will focus on next. But first, let's take another very short break here just so you can catch your breath, get any questions in there, write down your notes. We're gonna take a moment here, just a few seconds, and then we'll pick things back up. Okay, folks, given some time there to get your questions in. If you are still working on those, by all means, get those in there. Our team is waiting for those so we can answer them for you. So with that, let us get back to work. Now's the time to talk about the import process itself. The first thing you'll need is a spreadsheet with all your client information. If you already have that, great. If not, then you will want to export it from where you have your clients currently. Now, if you are not sure how to export your clients, then please check out our help center. We have help articles with the steps for a lot of popular programs that are out there. We'll also post the link here in the chat. So of course you can check that out later when you can concentrate on doing that. Now, as a word of warning, there are a lot of variables between how different programs export your client information. So you don't want to import the sheet right away. Before importing it, it is most likely going to be necessary to do some sort of formatting to the spreadsheet itself to ensure that all of your client information is listed correctly. We will focus on the most important points that you will need to pay attention to, but the Q&A section will remain available for everybody watching. So make sure to let us know if you do have questions as you're doing this. So let's take this from the top and make sure everything about this is very clear to you. As we mentioned earlier, in TaxDome, you have both accounts and contacts. So in order for your import to create both 
and link them together automatically, you will need to have an account name column as well as a contact name column. You can model yours after the one you're seeing on your screen right now. That's a great way to do that. Alternatively, if you go to the accounts page and click on the import buttons, you'll be able to download a sample spreadsheet. We'll also share a spreadsheet for you in the webinar chat. That might save you a little bit of time and a little bit of searching. We'll get that out there for you. But back to the spreadsheet now. The basics of what you will be doing is making sure you have both account name and contact name columns, as well as an email address column too. The email address is necessary for them to be able to log into the client portal and properly interact with you. If you have some clients without an email address, you can still import them and use their accounts to store their important data there. They simply won't be able to access the account, but at least you will have all of their data in one place. So if you have clients without email addresses, don't worry about it. Still get them into your system so you can do all your work. Now, those three columns that I mentioned are the ones that I'd say are the most important to achieve a basic level of functionality. However, there are a couple more that we recommend setting up. Those will be the account type and account tags columns. As for the account type, that's where you can indicate if the account is a company or an individual. If neither applies, well, you can either leave the field empty or set it to, let's say, other. We see a lot of firms finding it very important to differentiate their clients like this. So if you'd like that as well, make sure that you set it up here inside the sheet. Now for the account tags. This ties in with what we talked about earlier. You can add tags to all your clients to categorize them. And this isn't limited to just whether somebody's an individual or a company, but you can use this for any type of categorization. For example, um, one would be to list tags for your tax return clients. Maybe you've got separate bookkeeping clients, audit clients, or anything else really. You can get even more granular if you want by adding more tags like monthly, quarterly, weekly bookkeeping, things like that. Whatever you need to do, you have those options. Now, of course, if you provide multiple services for your clients, you will need multiple tags. So to handle that, you can just add a comma and then enter another tag. You can add as many as you need this way. As for the other information, your spreadsheet can have as many columns as you need since TaxDome supports custom fields. This means you can include any data that might be important for your firm, ranging all the way from birthdays to maybe their social security numbers. But just keep in mind, you might just wanna differentiate between which information is relevant to the entire account and which is relevant to just the contacts, since you will have to choose which columns are for which during the import process. You also don't have to name your columns exactly like how you have them in Taxdome. You'll be able to choose exactly which column will be used for what information field. That's not going to be a problem either. So that covers the important points regarding the information you should list but we now need to talk about how you'll save yourself a ton of time. I mentioned earlier how your accounts and contacts can be linked automatically during the import, but let's pause here for a moment for a quick lesson regarding linking. So I'm gonna break it down this way. We already established that accounts can have multiple contacts linked to them. For example, in the case of a married couple, however, Contacts can also be linked to multiple accounts. If you have a client, for example, that owns multiple businesses, you can link that client's contact to all of the accounts that you create for the different businesses or to multiple businesses and maybe even an individual account. To clarify that a little bit further, all the work you do for the different accounts won't get mixed up and the linked contact will be able to be easily switched between on all of these accounts without needing to log back out and log in as a different account over and over again. So this way, you don't need to worry about this being inconvenient for your clients. It actually makes life very easy for them. 
Okay, so now let's get back to the sheet so I can show you how to get things set up and the linking done in there. For accounts that will only have one linked contact, meaning one person, you just need to make sure their account name and contact name are in the same row. That's it. When you have a business or family account, you will want to use the same account name and details in multiple rows, but then you will have all the contact information be different for the different contacts. This way, one account and multiple contacts will be created during the import process, and they will, of course, be linked automatically. You will do the opposite when you have a contact which will be linked to multiple accounts. You will copy the contact information into multiple rows, but change the account name and details for each row. This is the optimal way to have your spreadsheet set up, but some softwares sometimes export it with all the contact details listed in the same row. Like for example, in this example I'm showing you right here, I prepared for you to take a look at. You can see the primary taxpayer information here and then the spouse information further right in a separate column. You could try to separate it into multiple rows in order to have it be like you've seen earlier, but there's an alternative method you can use to save yourself some time. Instead of importing the sheet once, you would import it an additional time for every extra contact per row. So let me explain this with a slide just to make that a little bit more clear. During each import, you would just choose the information which is relevant to one contact and ignore the others. So let's say in the first import, you only import the primary taxpayer and in the second, you only get the spouse. Now we won't go too deep into this during our webinar today, but we have a help article with information about this exact scenario in detail. So please take a look if your situation is very similar to this. So no matter which method you end up doing, the last step you need to remember is needing to save your spreadsheet as a CSV file. That's the format you need to use for the import. So do not forget about that. Also, everything we just talked about is covered in even more detail in both our Help Center and in our Tax Dome Academy. This means you can check those out once you start preparing your own spreadsheet and you will be able to follow the guidelines at your own pace. Also, the only other thing I want to mention is this. If you run into any issues or uncertainties, you just don't know what you should do next, just start a chat or send an email to our team and they will help you out. We are there to make sure you get this done right the first time. So with that, we are going to take another break in just a moment, but first let's take a second to reiterate the key points since this is very important to get all of this right. Make sure you have columns for account names, contact names, and email addresses. Add account type and account tags columns to categorize your clients. Add columns for any other information you want to bring into TaxDome since you can add as many fields as you like. Keep the account and contact names in the same row for them to be automatically linked during the import process. And finally, don't forget to save your spreadsheet as a CSV file in order to import it. Okay, that was a lot for the brain right now. So we're gonna take a quick break and let you uh, rest that tired brain. Again, if you have any questions, let us know in the Q&A section. I'm gonna step away for a little bit. Once I am back, we are going to go through the rest of the import process. So I'll give you about a minute here and I will see you shortly.
<clears throat> okay, everybody, recess bell has just rang. So it's time to get back on track here. We're making some great progress. So let's keep it going. And we are now going to focus on the actual import process now. To get started, go back to the accounts page in your portal and then click on the import button here. Next, you will be prompted to upload your CSV file in this menu. This is the one that we told you before is very important to have as a CSV file. So if you still wanna follow along during this section, you can use the example sheet that we posted a little bit earlier. Now, after uploading it, the first step is to map the account information. After selecting the account name, you will want to select the account type column. Taxdome will then show you all the remaining columns you have in your sheet, and you will get to decide what to do with each one of them. You most likely won't need to use each field that you see here, so you'll want to ignore those for now. However, to map the fields you do need, click on the action button in the middle of the menu, and then set it to sync custom field. Now, you just need to select one of the fields you have in TaxDome and the information from your spreadsheet will be used for that field. The main priority here in this first step is to select and map all account specific fields. Don't do anything with the fields which show contact information since we're going to handle those later during the import process. Also, while you're mapping your information, there's a good chance you'll realize you don't have a corresponding field in TaxDome. This really isn't an issue since you can make new custom fields right as you're mapping the fields. So there's this new field option that's present whenever you're selecting the TaxDome fields. So you just need to click on the button and enter the field purpose and the type. Once you map all the account information, you can go to the next step. The first thing you get to do here is choose which account type will be assigned to your clients who either don't have anything listed or something beside these three types. Right underneath this section, you get to customize these toggles for everyone you're about to import. They have different functions, so I'm gonna quickly explain what they do. The login toggle allows the contacts to access the client portal and all the accounts information. You wanna have this enabled for all the contacts who might need to sign documents or generally interact with you in the future. The notify toggle allows the contact to receive email notifications and emails sent through TaxDome. Finally, the email sync toggle allows you to pull in all your past email conversations with this client. Just make sure to enable your own email sync as well. Now, I recommend enabling all three of these toggles since there aren't really any notable downsides to it. You'll also get to choose whether you want to invite all your clients to the portal by ticking this box. While you can invite them right away, I would suggest waiting. For example, you might realize you would have preferred naming something a little bit different in your import and you might want to redo it. Or you want to get your work processes set up first, or maybe you might want to white label your portal before you invite the clients. There's several scenarios in which you might want to hold off on inviting your clients during the initial import. That's entirely up to you. As long as you have the login toggle enabled for them, you will be able to invite them all in bulk at a later point. So for now, you can leave the invitation checkbox unticked. All right, now the next field you see is for applying tags. As long as you add the tags to the spreadsheet, like I showed you a little earlier, you will not need to do this. What this field here does is lets you select tags and then apply them to every client you import. So if you have your clients split into separate sheets for different groups or based on the different services you provide, you can easily tag them like this without needing to do any setup on your spreadsheet. However, if you have all your clients in one big single sheet, then you will want to avoid using this option. 
The next field lets you choose who from your team will be assigned to everybody from the import. If you're not sure yet who's going to be taking care of which clients, then you can just assign them to yourself for the time being, and you can reassign the clients at a later point in time. The last option here lets you select a folder template, just like with the previous two fields. It will be applied to everyone you import. So if you don't want everyone to get the same folder structure, deselect the template here by clicking on the X and then handle it all at a later point in bulk. We can head now to the next step. This is very similar to the first step. The goal is to map the contact information the same way you did for the account information, except that now it is related exclusively to the contacts. Once you're done, you can go to the final step, which is the final review. It will recap how you have set things up and then you can confirm if you are ready to start that import. If you are, then just start the import and wait for it to finish. After a few moments, you will have your client's list set up in TaxDome, but in case there were any issues with the import, you will be notified so you can check on what caused that particular problem. Now, I won't start the import for myself since I already added my clients, but for you, that is the last step. Just like with the spreadsheet section earlier, let us quickly recap the important things to remember about this process. Just give me one moment to open up the slide here. Okay, here we go. You will want to map all account information in the first step. Avoid mapping personal details that would be related to one of the contacts to the whole account. Enable all three toggles when prompted, but don't tick the box to invite them since you have other things left to do before you're ready for that. Next up, if you set up your tags in your spreadsheet, leave the tags field in the import menu blank. After that, you'll do the contact mapping, which will work the same way as it did for the accounts, but now you map the information which is important for the individual contacts and not the whole account. And finally, review what you did and hit that import button. Overall, the process is very streamlined and there's not much room for error unless you forgot to map something or perhaps it was listed wrong in the spreadsheet. Therefore, there's no reason to hesitate importing your clients, especially considering you can delete everybody and start over in about a minute just in case you wanted to redo it. We will post a link in the chat with more information about deleting clients. If you managed to follow along though up until now, you can certainly try importing the sample spreadsheet if you like. As always, if something is unclear, let us know in the Q&A. Our team is here to help you out and answer those questions. Now, once you have your clients imported, you will be able to open your client's list and interact with them, either one by one or in bulk. If you're just looking for certain clients, you can use the search bar at the top or our filtering tools. Just select your filters, such as tags, the import date, their activity status, and much more to help you find everyone that you are looking for. Besides this, you can also see some more information about the accounts in these columns here in the accounts list. It gives you an easy overview of what's pending for the account, but the best part is being able to customize which columns you see. Click on the gear icon in the top right corner of the table and you will see the default columns listed, but also any custom fields that you have. This way you can control what you will see and to make things even more convenient, you can even reorder them. Now I mentioned earlier in the webinar that you should make a test account. If you won't try to import a spreadsheet right now, you'll still be able to follow along for this next part as long as you have a single test account available to you. Now I will open up one of the accounts from my list here. You will see an overview page which shows everything that's happening with this specific account. Emails, tasks, proposals, and everything else will be accessible inside their accounts and organized in these sections here. 
These sections show you the recent couple of entries, but you can either click on the view all button on any of these sections or the tabs in the bar at the top of your screen to see more. All the items and files you send will be automatically organized in the appropriate tabs in the client account. So whenever you're looking for something, you know where you'll find it. Unless you or your team members delete something, it will be securely kept in your portal forever and you'll be able to access it whenever you need to. Now, while I'm still in the same client account, let's check the info tab. This is where you will see the account details and the linked contacts. This is also where you'll get to adjust the toggles from earlier in case you need to. So for example, if you want to remove portal access from somebody, well, just turn the toggle off. In case you're wondering why one of these contacts doesn't have this set of toggles, it's because the contact doesn't have an email address. If you didn't have it when you created the contact and you want to add it later, just click on their name and you'll be able to add it right there on the spot. Now we saw where you can find everything related to a client. So it's time to see how you can create new things for them, like a secure message or even an internal task. You can always use the new button since that's your shortcut to do anything as quickly as possible. This menu will save you time on a daily basis, so definitely get comfortable using it. From this menu, you just select whatever you wanna create, send or upload, and then pick which client you want to do it for. This doesn't require any further explaining, so instead, let's just talk about how you would do these same things in bulk. If I go back to my client's page, I will see boxes on the left of the accounts. If I tick some, a new menu bar will appear above the list. By using any of these options up here, I can do actions for all of the selected clients, whether that be sending an organizer, assigning a different team member, or anything else you can choose here. As an example, if I wanted to send out an email to all of my tax return clients, I could filter my account list to see all the accounts with the tax return tag. I can select everybody by ticking the box at the top of the list and then click on the send email button. At this point, I just need to either compose an email or use a template and I can send it out. The email would then be sent to everybody that I selected. It's equally simple for all the other bulk actions, so don't expect yourself running into issues with doing this yourself. As easy as it is to do something for one client, it's just as easy to do it for multiple clients in bulk. Now, let me give you one more example. If you didn't apply a folder template during your import, you can do it the same way as you just saw with the emails. Select the clients you want to apply a template for, click on more actions up here, and then use the apply folder template option. So now that you know how sending things out to your clients works, it is important to reiterate a very important point here. For you to have two-way interactions with your clients, they need to have access to the portal. We briefly touched upon this a little earlier when we talked about the toggles during the import process. To properly work with clients and have them use secure messages, sign documents and proposals, fill out organizers and everything else, they need access to the client portal. They don't have it up until you invite them, even if their login toggle was enabled earlier. You still have plenty of things left to do before you're ready to take care of this step, but since it's only a couple of clicks, let's go over it right now. Let's say you reach the end of your setup, you've got everything ready to go, and you are ready to invite your clients. You would go into this new tab in your accounts page called Pending Activations. There, all the clients with enabled login toggles who have not activated their accounts will be listed. You can select specific clients or everyone and then invite them with this button right here. The clients will receive an activation email 
and they just have to set up a password in order to start using the portal. And that's really all there is to it. So you see why we took the extra minute just to cover this here. Now, let's take one last break, everybody. We want to give you time to get your final questions in here. So in the meantime, get those in there. We're going to wrap things up. I will be right back with you after a very short break. Okay, folks, that's going to be a very short break. Once again, get all your questions in there and we will get those answered. So for that, folks, we have reached the end of today's webinar. Let's recap what we talked about. We started with an explanation of what TaxDome is, and we broke down the core setup steps before we went on a lap through the portal to show you what the different pages are for. After that, we took some time to talk about the CRM, and then we spent some time explaining how to get your clients into TaxDome. We then finished up by showing you how to interact with your imported clients and even how to invite them to the portal. If we revisit the core setup steps from the start of the webinar, we'll see that we covered two of them completely. And that sounds to me like we had quite the productive session today. The next step for you will be to apply what you just learned here and get your own clients into TaxDome. Afterwards, you can watch our other webinars to continue with the other setup steps that we outlined at the very beginning. Additionally, folks, we have courses available in our TaxDome Academy, which cover everything that we talked about here and much more. So if you want to tackle everything we talked about today and follow along with all the steps at your own pace, then make sure to visit our Tax Dome Academy. Thank you so much, folks, for joining us and taking the time out of your day to attend our webinar. I ho certainly hope you managed to learn more about how easy it is to take your first steps with Tax Dome. Certainly hope you all have a wonderful day, wonderful week ahead, and we will see you soon for another webinar.